Uh, welcome back, everybody. I'm Jason Williams, and we're here for another episode of the Wealth Advisory's Top 10. Uh, last month was an interesting month. It got off to a really great start, but everything just sort of uh, just sort of went to hell in the last couple of weeks. Uh, you know, the, the last week of the month, we had Russia invade Ukraine. Markets just tanked all over the world, but then immediately rebounded. It was a really weird situation, and honestly, it's a really, it's still a really weird situation. It's very fluid. You know, we're getting reports from what's going on uh, in Eastern Europe, but we really don't know exactly what's happening on the ground. Uh, what I can say is that markets have started to rally. Uh, I'm recording this on Friday. Um, you know, the when you're watching this, it'll be last Friday uh, for the Wealth Advisory folks. It'll be two Fridays ago for the folks watching it on YouTube. But anyway, um, the the invasion started the, the day before. Markets tanked and then markets recovered. The NASDAQ was down uh, by like 2% and rallied to close the day up 3%, so a 5% swing there. Um, the day's trading activity actually encapsulated both the highs and the lows from like the entire week before it, which is not a good sign. That's not like a healthy market uh, activity right there. Um, but it's just, uh, it's just crazy what we're seeing. You know, war is not bullish. Uh, there's always a way to make money in any situation, but war in the long term is not bullish. You know, uh, war takes lives, war wastes money, war wastes uh, time, and time and money and lives, you know, lost all are a detriment to the economy. So long term, war is not bullish. I don't care what anybody else tells you, they're wrong. In the short term, there are places to make money, and you saw that yesterday. You know, you saw commodities going up because Russia and Ukraine produce a lot of the world's commodities. Um, you saw oil prices uh, pierce $100 a barrel. Get used to that. Uh, we're definitely going to be seeing uh, plus $100 a barrel oil. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised if eventually, you know, in the next couple of years, it gets up to $200 a barrel. Um, people are going to call me crazy about that, but they thought I was crazy when it, I said it could get back up to 100 and here we are. <clears throat> um, it's a really interesting situation, like I said. It's, uh, it's, it's kind of scary. Uh, things are still in flux, and it's making it a little bit difficult to make, uh, you know, short-term uh, decisions in the market. You know, as far as long-term investing goes, uh, political turmoil does not price things for the long term. You know, it, it is short term, even if it's a long war, it's short term, um, <clears throat> you know, and it reflects uh, uh, in the short term prices. And yes, we are dip buyers and, you know, the, the markets typically go back up. Um, but, you know, you don't want to be buying every single dip. So and this is one of those, you know, yesterday was one of those or Thursday, I guess, was one of those dips where you're really not sure if you want to be buying that because, yes, the markets are rallying now. But if history's <clears throat> any indicator, excuse me, if history is any indicator, you know, when Europe goes to war, European exchanges close and markets tank. And, you know, the last time we were looking at, you know, something like this, you saw, you know, basically a war started in June and the markets dropped and then the markets rallied. And it wasn't until August that the markets really started to fall. And it wasn't until November of that year that U.S. markets bottomed. Uh, and that was World War One, the Great War. Um, you know, which sort of started with a silly situation like what we're seeing here, egos getting out of control. Um, so I don't know, I don't want people to be scared, but at the same time, I don't want people to not be paying attention to what's going on because this is very serious. Uh, so that all being said, what I'm really trying to get to is that it's a little bit tough for me to pick a top 10 list this month because, you know, uh, stocks were getting, some stocks that were getting crushed on Thursday are, are just taking off today on Friday when I'm recording this. And stocks that I expected to really get crushed uh, uh, on, on news like this are, are actually going up, and stocks that I expected to do well are actually going down. It's really an odd reaction. Uh, commodities are actually falling, oil is falling, but we're going to need, um, you know, we're going to need all of those commodities. We're gonna need oil, and we've actually got a tighter supply now. Um, so it's a little bit, uh, it's, it's, things aren't working the way that I would expect them to work. Uh, but I only think that that can last for so long. So my top 10 picks this month are going to sort of reflect that. Um, we're going to stay away from the high growth sectors. Uh, we're going to stay away sort of from the technology stocks. And we're going to look at stocks that um, are going to do better in times of inflation, in times of turmoil, and just companies that have, you know, the strength of the balance sheets uh, and uh, the, the, the growing income and the steady income streams to sort of help us through rough times. Uh, so now that I've said that, Let's get into the list. Um, last month, we had a couple of good stocks, you know, a couple of winners. And, you know, granted, we averaged a loss for the month, but we averaged less of a loss than the market. So technically, we beat the market. I don't like to win by losing, but, you know, it is a win either way. 
Um, and so I'm going to keep some of the uh, some of the winners that we have from last month. I'm going to let most of them run, actually. Um, starting off with Lidos Holdings. Uh, Lidos is a defense contractor, so while, like I said, war isn't bullish, we may see some extra interest in this sector as things in Eastern Europe play out. Um, and if things continue to escalate, the first strikes against the United States are going to be cyber strikes, and that's where Lidos excels. Um, so I think this is a uh, this is a great play. This is a good opportunity, and this is a great long-term holding too. So we're going to put Lidos in as number one and see what kind of action it gets this month. Uh, next up, we're going to put in another winner. Um, that's Bunge Limited. Uh, ticker symbol BG. Uh, again, like I said, this is a winner, so it's sticking around. It's also a company that helps feed the world, and food is one of those products we just can't do without, no matter what's going on around us. Um, so, uh, you know, inflation's running hot. Doesn't seem like it's backing down. That bodes well for companies making products people have to buy, no matter what geopolitical stuff is going on. Um, so that's, that's my thesis there on Bunge, and we're adding that as number two. Uh, coming down the list, um, I think you get the pattern. Winner means it's sticking around. Um, I write a monthly investment newsletter called The Wealth Advisory. Don't worry, this isn't an ad. It's to explain why you're not hearing me speak right now. It's because over 25,000 members pay the very reasonable annual subscription fee for The Wealth Advisory so they can get my latest insights and advice hot off the digital press. I believe I have an obligation to my loyal readers so there will be a quiet period during which the latest investment recommendation will not be made public. Should you decide you want to join the Wealth Advisory ranks and get immediate access to these picks, you'll find a link in the video description to a secure order page where you can sign up to become a member. Of course, I invite you to tune into the Wealth Advisory Top 10 videos for as long as you like with no obligation whatsoever, except maybe to hit the like button once in a while. Uh, instead, I'm gonna add Hannon Armstrong back in because it's been on a tear and it looks like it's still got some momentum behind it to carry it higher this month. It's a REIT, it helps fund renewable energy projects, and it spins off growing cash distributions, and I think that that kind of uh, safety there is gonna be nice this month. Um, so, whew, rounding out the top five, uh, I've got a new stock. Uh, it's one of our newest uh, recommendations. We just added this one back into the model portfolio last month and it's already giving us a little gain, but I'm positive that's just the start. We held this one before for just a few months back in 2020 and cashed out a 67% gain. I see much more growth this time around and especially in current conditions. So we're keeping with my tradition and adding the latest feature recommendation as a top stock this month. Um, that rounds out our top five and I've got five more for you. Um, number six, for the month is going to be Element Solutions, ticker symbols ESI. And now here's another somewhat commodity play that I think could do well in a tumultuous market. Uh, Element Solutions makes chemical uh, makes chemical coatings for electronics and for um, the uh, machines that we use to produce oil and natural gas. So its coatings protect electronics. They help waterproof your phones and help waterproof the chips in your phones and things like that. Um, and they help drilling equipment stay lubricated and uh, uh, help uh, keep it from corroding. So like it or not, we're going to need more oil while Hannon Armstrong gets those renewable projects up to speed. And ESI, I think, will be a pick and shovel play in that industry. So we're adding that in this month. Um, coming up next is number seven. And we're getting a little bit sort of maybe more on the technology high growth side with this one. Um, but it's sort of a, it's, it's, an, it's a really interesting stock. It's, it's one that I expected would have tanked uh, on the news of the uh, invasions, um, but it's, uh, it didn't. It went up, and it's Maxar, and it's a satellite company. And I think it's getting a lot of attention right now because most of the aerial views you're seeing of these Russian troop movements through Ukraine are coming from Maxar satellites. So it's, people are paying attention to it. People are seeing the name uh, at the bottom of all of these pictures. People are hearing it mentioned in the news. And I'm guessing that's why it was moving up while nearly everything else was moving down. Um, it's got momentum behind it, and we're all going to be watching for those images. So let's see if the trend can continue and Maxar gets us some gains in March. Um, let's see, that brings me to number eight. And number eight is another newer recommendation that I really like. Uh, we had it in last month, and while it didn't give us a gain, the monthly distribution cushioned the blows from the market. Uh, so in the final week of the month, we actually you know, got a little bit of a gain there. 
Um, you know, we still closed out for a loss overall, but uh, I really like the place that the stock is in. I really like the position that the uh, uh, that, that it is and it's in its sort of trading pattern. And it's going to be giving out another distribution because it pays us every month. So I want everybody to be building a position in this fund, and I'm going to keep it in the top 10 to show just how serious I am. I really think that we're all going to be very excited to have that extra income in the months ahead. Um, so that's going to be my, uh, my number eighth pick. Um, we're going to uh, have a name come up for the folks uh, who have paid subscriptions to the Wealth Advisory, but again, this is a new recommendation, and we like to keep those just for the paying subscribers to be fair for the first couple of months. Uh, so if you're watching on YouTube, I'm sorry, you're going to have to uh, sign up to get the name of that one. But you can with the link in the description below. And uh, that brings me to number nine. Uh, number nine, everybody gets this one. It's Qualcomm. Um, I'm sort of running out of winners from last month and movers from last month and basing the next few of these uh, picks on fundamentals and valuation alone. And Qualcomm's valuation has come down a lot and shares are looking very attractive for the long term. <clears throat> it's a high tech company. It's a growth stock, but it's also profitable and it packs a lot of value in its balance sheet. Um, it might not be high flyer this month, but it's likely to outperform the markets and it's a great long-term buy at this point. So I wanna put it in as number nine. And that brings me finally to number 10. Uh, this is another relatively new one. Uh, it did not do too well last month. It wasn't part of the top 10 picks, but it just didn't perform well in the uh, model portfolio in general but it could explode given the right catalysts. I don't know if you know, but both Russia and Ukraine are major uh, exporters of refined uranium. And the world is about to go through a, a nuclear power renaissance, right? Um, the, the nuclear global, or the global nuclear industry is going to be growing. Russia and Ukraine are major exporters of, of uranium, and that's the fuel we need to grow that industry. Uh, so we're putting Centris Energy in as our number 10 pick because we're going to need uranium to power all those generators and Russia's not going to want to share it. And if Ukraine is part of Russia after all of this is over, well, Ukraine's not going to share it either. So we need a company that could give the U.S. A do the domestic supply that we desperately need and that's Centris Energy and that's why it's part of the model portfolio and that's why I'm making it our 10th pick this month. Um, so that's it. Those are our 10 stocks. Just to recap, we've got Lidos Holdings. Bunge Limited, uh, Hannon Armstrong, Element Solutions, Maxar, Qualcomm, and Centris Energy. And uh, hopefully those guys can give us some protection and give us some growth and uh, help us get through uh, what promises to be a very interesting and potentially tumultuous month. Um, thanks, as always, for tuning in. I hope everybody out there is safe and enjoying time with their friends and families. Um, I hope everybody can sort of just take a little minute uh, after you get done watching this and, and maybe uh, send a prayer or two over to the people in Ukraine. They could really use our support right now, any support we can give them. Um, and uh, as always, thanks for tuning in. If you're watching on YouTube, please subscribe to the channel, click the like button, hit that bell to make sure you get notified when I send out new stuff, and I'll see you all next month.